Okay, let's talk about Moses from the Bible. Now, the story is that he was adopted by an Egyptian princess, and he later became the leader of the Israelites and a lawgiver, and he led them out of Egypt into the promised land. Allegedly, he was born during the time that the Israelites were allegedly an enslaved minority. His Hebrew mother was Jochebed, and his father was Amram. Now, allegedly, the Pharaoh ordered all newborn Hebrew boys to be killed in order to reduce the population of the Israelites. The Pharaoh's daughter, identified as Queen Bethia in the Midrash, found the child floating in the Nile River and took him in. Now Amram is a patriarch that was mentioned in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And the small passage from the Dead Sea Scrolls indicates that Amram had a vision of two angelic type beings fighting over him. And they told him that they had control over the human race. One was pleasant looking, the other was frightening and described as a serpent in some translations. And I've talked about this before. Continuing on, what I find interesting is the story of Moses allegedly leading the Israelites out of Egypt. And with modern day history or research, alternative history, some contend that they, they were never slaves. They were kicked out and they lied about it. There was no real slavery going on. And they were more like workers and they were taking over the area. And they may have been part of a problem of taking over Egypt as the Hyksos for almost 200 years and then kicked out eventually, run out of Egypt. But let's uh, continue on with this alleged story of Moses. Now, it's interesting because if you begin to look at the story of Moses, you'll see that he led these people allegedly into the desert and contacted his God who appeared to him as a burning bush. And then he had taken his reed or, or whatever you want to call it, looks like a magic rod and created the Ten Commandments uh, out of stone. He also had a brass serpent that he was using to heal the Israelites when they got sick from uh, poisonous snake bites. So here's a serpentine symbol around a stick, which is something that you see in the medical industry, the symbol. But what's also interesting is that at night, they were following a light or fire in the sky. And there is a passage in the Bible about that. And I'm going to pull that up and read it real quick. Uh, from an online Bible version in Exodus thirteen twenty one. it says, By the day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of, of cloud, to guide them on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. So they're looking up in the sky to see this pillar of cloud guiding them as they walk and move. And then at night, it's a pillar of fire. And I found something very interesting and it was... A, a sketch of what the proposed 
first seal of the United States was to be. And it was Moses looking at this fire in the sky. And what's reminiscent of this is it's the same thing that Travis Walton described in his UFO encounter in his book, Fire in the Sky. Now, Moses is depicted with horns, and at the transfiguration of Jesus Christ, when a talking cloud came upon them and Jesus was lit in light to appear very white, he appeared with two other angelic beings that they thought one of them was Moses and the other Elijah. That is what these apostles thought. But it didn't seem to ever be fully confirmed by Jesus Christ that that's who they were. I do, I do recall him saying, it, you know, Elijah has come again, and he referred to him as John the Baptist. He wasn't confirming that those two beings during the transfiguration bathed in light with him were any of those two. But it's, it's said that one of these was Moses, who had already died, you know, quite a bit before uh, you know, and, and these apostles assume that's who it was. So we have a, a common theme and common imagery here. And I will count this fire in the sky that the alleged enslaved Israelites were following when they went from Egypt to Palestine or whatever they called it back then, uh, you know, at, at that time to their promised land or back to their promised land. So very interesting. Thank you.